was good y'all beatgenerals.com back with a brand new tutorial in this week's tutorial we'll be doing a beats by nav style track if you don't know who he is he's a young canadian dude uh, he's kind of mysterious in a way there's not really a ton of info out there about him but he's uh kind of affiliated with the whole exo camp with the weekend belly and all them uh but he has just a real cool kind of laid back trap type sound he does a little bit of singing a little bit of auto tune kind of rapping and stuff but it actually sounds really good has some dope tracks out there so we'll be doing that uh before we get to the tutorial i just want to apologize for the weight on this actual tutorial I was having some issues with my RAM and my computer dying or going out or whatever the term is for that. Uh, then I had to order some new ones and with my luck they sent it with USPS so it was delayed by a couple days so it was just kind of a mess waiting for everything to get here. Uh, but we're back in the game so let's jump in the next section and actually get started on the beat. So to start the track off with, I basically recorded a little piece, uh, three different little silent VSTs, and I recorded this little section and kind of built my own sample. Now, I really enjoy doing this lately, making these little sections, then exporting them out and using them kind of as samples versus just having them in here. You just do a lot more with them. It's kind of fun. And then the other cool thing about it is when you get stuck on a beat, like if I start making a beat and after a while I get stuck, it doesn't really sound like much, I'll export the sample out. And there's so many times that I come back later and use the actual whatever I have, the instrument instrumentation usually i usually don't export the drums but the instrumentation go back resample and make a whole new finished beat out of it so just a great way to a be more productive to bring kind of a different tone to your beats because it does give you a certain feel using samples and then three you don't have to worry about the whole publishing splits um you know all that kind of stuff clearing the samples so just a great way to go about it so uh these are three little elements that i put together to start the track off with and this is the original flp here so i just pulled it up real quick to show you guys where the sample came from so the first thing i have is uh patch 98 the bendy brassy pad and this is from ovo the dynasty volume 2 all three of these sounds are actually from that bank for silent from studiosounds.com so this is the very first thing i added uh just some chords and here's the actual chord uh what it looks like Okay, so it had kind of a uh, smooth type feel, sounded pretty good. So the next thing I wanted to do was add some, a little bit of drama. So I added this pad called the PD Uneasy Wavering. And if you take a look at it, I basically just pulled notes from the chords. If you see the ghost notes, and it just kind of created a little pattern coming down like this. And then after that, I added this little lead and it's called the LDT minus one. And I just added a couple of notes, just to add like a little top end lead line uh, to it. And here's what it sounds like. And this was basically the whole sample from here. Uh, you could either export it out, you know, uh, this way as a, a wave or mp3 file probably a wave file or you could just uh, open up Edison and then you can actually record the sample into here So this is usually how I go about it, just a little bit quicker. Um, and then you obviously trim out your loop and go through all that uh, to find a good loop of this. And then you just want to export it out. So you can just grab this and just drag it over to uh, your actual playlist or uh, to your actual step sequencer, whichever one you want. Uh, but basically that's how I created the sample um was just this little section so let's jump to the next section i'll show you guys how i actually flipped it for the track so before we actually move along to the creating of the beat i just want to mention real quick if you guys paid attention to the last flp that i showed you guys you guys saw me make the whole uh, pattern on pattern one uh so usually i'll create the whole beat in the same flp and i'll just keep pattern one uh with my sample so if i want to come back later remove a lead or remove a pad or remove something from my sample for the track i can just do it right inside the project instead of having to open something up uh so just a quick easy way to do it uh, so just keep everything on pattern one and then just start building on pattern two uh, for this one I'm actually starting fresh so uh, these are the two samples I have so I have one right here and 
and that one obviously includes that top end all lead and then I have another one and now that one is the same exact pattern except it doesn't have the top end lead so I'm going to use this one for the intro we're going to go ahead and set our BPM to 100 I kind of wanted this to have a pretty kind of slow type feel uh, almost wanted to make it a little bit of Bryson Tiller influence and then what I want to do is I just want to time stretch it okay and we want to make sure this is on generic so it doesn't actually change the pitch of it and then the other thing we're going to do is go ahead and reverse it so we have something like this as an intro piece Now, as you can tell, that is obviously way too fast. And the reason for that being is just that we cut two bars instead of one. So we just want to time stretch a little bit further to get it on time and not double time, basically. Okay, so we can literally just use this little section, cut this out. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, trim a little bit of the sample. We want to give it that kind of light airy type vibe that's in right now. So uh, to kind of achieve that, all we're going to do is just throw a parametric EQ on there, cut a good amount of the low end. Uh, maybe start something like that and we'll double check it here in a second. And maybe keep that, I don't know, around 1200. We want a very kind of narrow mid type sound, just that kind of nice softness from it. So we want to get rid of all the stuff that we really don't need. So let's go ahead and take a listen to it now. And then from here, we'll transition to the next sample where our leads and stuff will come in for the hook. So for the next sample, it's this one. And again, we want to reverse this. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And make sure we set this to the same effects channel. And now we have something like this. Okay, so we have that little end part uh, there because technically if you take a look at this sample or the actual lead that we used, it has a little bit of kind of a fade in, a little bit of a longer attack. So you, you have this little rise right here in the beginning, which even when we reverse it, it's obviously now just on the end. So it kind of gives a little bit of a weird type sound. So what I like to do is I like to actually go in here and I like to try to time stretch it a little bit, just kind of get rid of that. So let's see if we can just go in here and adjust that slightly just so we don't get that weird kind of uh, sound with that. So let's go ahead and let it play and then we'll adjust it. Okay, so we have a kind of a transition like that. Let's take a listen to that one more time from the top. Okay. 
Okay, so we have something like that. So we have that nice intro, has that kind of melodic tone that you hear the weekend, Drake, Nav, and all the muse. And then it drops into the more relaxed uh, type vibe where they could start actually coming in for the song. So whether it be a hook or a little pre hook, a little intro piece or whatever, that's kind of what this next little section will serve as. For our actual purpose, we're going to turn it into the hook section. So let's jump in the next section. I'll show you guys what I'm actually going to add to differentiate it from this point. So now that I have the sample laid out, I want to start kind of building it up, layering, and just getting a bigger track from what we have right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with pattern one. And uh, if you guys remember, like I said earlier, when you're doing this, you want to keep whatever your sample is on channel one or pattern one, pattern two, whatever. Just keep it inside your project. And the thing that that allows you to do is go back and check the notes and stuff so you can easily, you know, uh, copy and paste chords and stuff. You don't have to guess at the key of a song. So it also makes it easier in that sense as well. So once I had everything down, I decided to add the KB Soulful Wurlitzer. And this is from OVO, the Dynasty Volume 2 from Studiosounds.com. And all I did was just go into the actual track find out what the chords were uh, the chords that I played and I just reversed them since we reversed the sample so I'm gonna go down and start with the uh, E4 then I'm gonna go up to the G sharp B C sharp so this is the chord we're gonna start off with the exact same opposite of what we played earlier for the actual sample so and the reason we're doing that again is just because it's reversed And also, just one thing also, just keep in mind, this is the exact same chords that we played earlier, just basically reversed and just kind of listen to how much different it sounds versus the original chord progression we had. Sometimes the chord arrangement and the way you go from chord to chord can really change the tone of a musical piece. So keep that in mind sometimes. Sometimes you have the right chords or if you're just used to using certain chords that you like, try changing up the order of them sometimes. It really does make a big difference. Uh, but anyway, so the next thing we're gonna do is add a D, a F sharp, a A, and then a B. So we go from this to this. Then for the next one, we're going to go start with an E, go to the G sharp, and go to the B. The only difference is we're not going to play this little top end note over here just to make them slightly different. So over here we have a three note chord, over here we have the four note chord. So we start off with this. Now what we're going to do is, since these are velocity sensitive, we're going to go ahead and turn these down slightly. And then we're also going to go ahead and strum them. Just make them sound a little bit more natural. Give that EP a little bit of bounce and a little bit of flavor. So let's go ahead and add this in. And here's what it sounds like. So we have chords that match the sample perfectly, obviously, since we pull the chords directly from it. Uh, help sticking it up and start creating a bass to build on top of. So I'll jump to the next section. I'll show you guys once I had this EP, what I had the next. <laughs> 